karuna karuna tarangi takshi drita bhasha kusha kushpa bana chapam animadi biravritam mayu kai raham nityeva vibhavaye चंपक पुष्पा नासदंड विराजिता थारा खंतित रक्षारी नास भरण भासुरा कदम्ब मंजरी क्लिप्त कर्णपुर मनोहर थातंक युगली भूत थपनो डुप मंडला पद्मग शिलादर्श पारिभावी कपोलभू नव विद्रुम बिंबाश्री न्याकारी रदन शद नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ श्री ललित सहस्रनाम इट गिव्स मी सो मच ट्रांसेंडेंटल प्लेजर to present these holy names which i have been relishing and enjoying for over a year now almost 2 years and uh, the reason i held back was i was uncertain you know if this is something for uh, to share in public because it's so deep and so pure and so really wonderful huh but actually it's all the more reason to bring it out because it's very much unknown especially in the west even in india only a certain esoteric group uh, of devotees of the mother know about this but it's something that can be a daily practice it's something that if you practice it will bring you to higher and higher levels Now the thing about the structure of these holy names is that it begins from the lower stages of devotion where one is concentrating on the physical form and the physical form of course is very beautiful and important but it's only the beginning <laughs> I'm editing the last uh oh, 50 or so names and as you go through the thousand names they get higher and higher and higher until by the end well it's just the ultimate <laughs> so let's take a look at today's names 19 nava champaka pushpa bha nasa danda virajita her nose resembles a newly blossomed champaka flower So here's a picture of a champaka flower. It's a good old magnolia. <laughs> the Indian style or variety of magnolia. Of course, this flower has a very wonderful fragrance. It's prized everywhere that it grows for its its ability to fill a room with its fragrance. And similarly, the nose of the universal mother of course is going to have a wonderful fragrance and that fragrance is responsible for the sweetness that we experience when we meditate on her next tara kanti taraskari nasa bharana basura she is wearing a nose stud that outshines the stars her nose stud is made of rubies and diamonds Uh, not an ordinary nose stud <laughs> and tara means stars tara also is the name of a buddhist goddess and her name has the same meaning the stars uh, so she is a star and she is actually all the stars she is the origin of the universe in every respect so tara also means two goddesses named Mangala and Shukla Shukla of course means sweet 
and it has come down in modern language as Shukra. So Shukra means Venus, huh? and Mangala, of course, means Mars. So Venus and Mars, the planets, are on her nose stud. And Venus and Mars are in some ways opposite. You know, they say men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> but it's not really exactly like that. Uh, Shukracharya is the spiritual master of the demons. And he has the philosophy that you can't really achieve purity, forget it anyway, you know. <laughs> you might as well just indulge your senses, and then when you're satisfied, maybe you can think of God. This is very popular these days. This kind of philosophy, even among spiritually inclined people, you know, so-called spiritually inclined people. But the real spiritually inclined people know that it's more like Mangala, it's more like Mars. It's more like a battle that you go into. Skanda is the, uh, the deity of Mars. He's the god of war. So when you go into battle, you, uh, you don't think of any losses. Huh? You just think of how you can win. And so in the same way, when you deal with the senses, you can't get caught up in thinking, oh, I might lose some of this pleasure, you know. I might lose some of my comfies. <laughs> no, you'll lose. Because the uh, nature of Venus is a softness in character, a lack of determination. And this is how Shukracharya misleads the demons, causing them to fail. <laughs> They always lose in their battles with Indra and the mother. Oh, this is because of their indulgence. See, the demigods aren't like that. Well, they're not so much like that. <laughs> they still indulge, but it's within the rules of religious observances. So their indulgence doesn't weaken them. That's the difference between the demigods and the demons. They're both very powerful but it's a difference in character. One follow, the demons follow Venus and the demigods follow Mars. That's why they're always victorious. The next one, Kadamba Manjari Klipta Karnapura Manohara. She's wearing petals of Kadamba flowers in her ears, or the flowers kept in her hair flow down to her ears. And here's a picture of a Kadamba flower, a very amazingly beautiful flower. So these flowers are grown outside of her palace in a special garden. And as we uh, heard last time, the flowers grow there in order to get their fragrance from her. So she is <laughs> the source of the sweet fragrance of all flowers and all flowers derive their fragrance from her. Next, 22. Tatanka Yugali Bhuta Tapano Dupa Mandala. She is wearing the sun and moon as her earrings. This means that she is in control of all the heavenly bodies in the universe. And I can't help it. I just get blissed out when I talk about this stuff. <laughs> And uh, uh, it's also said that the sun and moon represent her eyes, earrings, and her bosom. The, the bija, kling, symbolizes her two bosoms, which represent the two semicircles in kling bija. Here's a picture of the bija. The kling bija is also known as kama bija. And... Of course, this gets into a sensitive subject, confidential subject, which has to be heard from a guru who is realized in this. So it's not, this is, this is where we get into the confidential stuff we can't share in public. So most of the namas, as we went over in the last time, have bijas encoded in them, either in the letters, the matrika, 
or in the meaning. This is one of those instances where the bija is encoded in the meaning. Uh, the kling is not stated directly, but it's derivable or derivative from the meaning of this particular nama. Let's see what else. Oh, Saundarya Lahari 28 says, Brahma, Indra, and other celestials perish, even though they have drunk nectar, which confers immunity from frightful gray hairs of old age and death. If the longevity of Shiva is not limited by time, despite his swallowing the terrific poison, it is because of the greatness of your ear ornaments. This is the power of her ornaments. 23. Padmaraga Shiladharsha Paribhavi Kapolabhu. Her cheeks are shining, soft, and reflecting. Padmaraga is a type of flawless ruby. So here's a picture of a flawless ruby. Very beautiful. And these rubies are in her crown, uh, on her ears, on her necklace. I mean, they're everywhere uh, around her because she loves the color red. <laughs> color red is the color of compassion. And she is just flowing with waves of compassion at all times. And we feel this when we chant these names. I can feel it right now just by talking about them. So this is such a wonderful thing. And this is why we recommend that you chant these and meditate on these names. So don't ever wear a flawed ruby. It's very dangerous. If you have a ruby for astrological purposes, because it increases the influence of Mars in your chart, then you should get a flawless one, even if it's expensive. Saundarya Lahari 59 says, Your face is Cupid's four-wheeled chariot, having the pair of your ear ornaments reflected in the expanse of your cheeks. Cupid, the mighty warrior sitting on it, plots revengefully against Lord Shiva, resting on the chariot of the earth, having the sun and moon for its wheels. Fabulous poetry of Shankaracharya. So Cupid always tries to distract Lord Shiva from his meditations so that uh, Lalita can have uh, amorous affairs with him. So he's her secret ally. <laughs> Even though Shiva doesn't like him, <laughs> Shiva just vaporizes him every time he, he tries to distract him from his uh, meditation. <laughs> so this is going on. And finally, 24, Navavidruma Bimba Shri Nyayakrari Radhanachaya. Her lips outshine fresh coral and the bimba fruit. Uh, Mamordica monadelpha. Bimba fruit is normally compared to beautiful lips because of the shape and because of the color. So these are the descriptions of her face. Remember, we're going to start at the top. We started at the top with her crown, and then we're gradually coming down to her nose, her ears, her mouth, and lips, her cheeks. Huh? And then gradually we're going to describe the whole rest of her bodily form. Now, most of the time, she does not manifest a form. She prefers to be formless. That's her nature. But when she does manifest a form, it looks like this. So this is an aid to meditation for people who are still attached to the bodily concept. See, because we can't let go of that immediately, we have to follow a gradual process of advancement through the four stages, karma yoga, uh, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga. So these four stages have sub-stages within them, 
And so in the beginning, see, she doesn't exclude anybody. She doesn't say, oh, you have to be already advanced, you know, to worship me. No, she accepts worship from anyone, even the demons. Of course, the demons are usually very disobedient and she has to chastise them. But even then, her chastisement is good for them. And they wind up, even if, if she kills them, they take birth on the heavenly planets where they can enjoy like anything. Of course, after that, they have to go back to being demons, but that's another story. <laughs> we'll get into that when we uh, reveal our new edition of the Devi Bhagavatam, and that's coming up soon. In fact, this weekend. <laughs> so you can look forward to that. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.